Welcome to the VHF UHF channel and uh, we talked about SDRs, we talked about and we're going to talk about more about that this week um, in today's video, the first video that I posted about what I plan to do this week on videos, you see a picture of the RTL SDR V3 which is a dongle uh, this is my SDR Play RSPDX, which is a, a wideband receiver. I wanted to just put things straight of what it does and does not do and what these are and are not. Uh, so, first of all, they are computer-controlled radios. That's very important to understand. You need to run those using a computer or a tablet without... A computer or tablet these are pretty much useless so they are radios but they are they just don't have any controls they are controlled by a, a computer device there's different types of software to use and each has its own capabilities um, what this is in general if you add a computer take the SDR device or software defined receiver they are first of all wideband receivers they are communications receivers which is different from a scanner radio communications receivers have more capabilities a lot more modes that you can use including upper lower sideband and are very flexible in the case of a software defined receiver the flexibility is multiplied by a thousand there's so many possibilities here that it is amazing what you could do one of the things that you need to know is if you are wanting to have a radio or a receiver that gets VHF UHF frequencies and do fast scan of frequencies to search these devices are not for you as the scan capabilities and speed are rather limited and slow compared to a dedicated scanner do these receive encrypted digital uh, signals? No. It is illegal, actually, to receive anything that is encrypted digital without actually having the express um, consent to do so. So these do not add more. But they, depending on the software you use, there's a lot of things that can be done with the software and they can add capabilities so some of the software out there are capable of being and using trunk capabilities following signals around um, there's software out there that can actually decode some form of uh, digital modes and also uh, these are of course wideband receivers so they are very flexible in receiving pretty much every frequency range one thing that these, um, and I wonder why actually there's no regulation for those, and maybe it's because the way they are advertised, regular scanner radios and portable communications receivers will usually have, especially in the United States, some of the frequency ranges removed, like the old analog cell band, for example. These don't. These are capable of tuning everywhere and probably because they are different in the way they are actually uh, in their own category of devices. So do they replace a regular scanner radio or any uh, scanner radio or communications receiver that um, is available today? Not necessarily, it depends what you're gonna do, but they are very flexible, they are capable of doing a lot of things and what mostly is interesting is that they are rather inexpensive compared to a regular radio. And that also can make it interesting for a lot of people. The RTL is the RV3, is roughly $30. This, the RSPDX, is 200 But if you start off with an RSP1A, which is the entry level from SDR Play, you got a great radio and it's about $110, $120. So they are expen not expensive and do a lot compared to a lot of radios that you would actually purchase th that would require to be probably much more expensive to do the same thing. So this week we're going to look at different uh, software 
and we're going to actually look at something that I have not looked much personally, and it's plugins to actually add capabilities to these devices. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.